I've never really done anything like this before, but I feel like there's a huge problem among my fellow believers that really needs to be addressed here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jacob Dufour, and I'm a Christian filmmaker. I recently joined several large Christian groups on Facebook to help promote my company's movies. As I began seeing other posts on the group, I noticed that most of them said things like, Comment Amen for Jesus, Keep Scrolling for Satan, or If you comment Amen, God will bless you with such and such, and that kind of garbage. And I thought to myself, this is a group of hundreds of thousands of people who profess to be Christians. Let's see how many are actually serious about it. So I decided to do something a little controversial, and if I was wrong in any way for doing it, I sincerely apologize. But I decided to do a little experiment. So I posted Luke 4, 7 in the group along with the caption, Comment Amen if you agree. For those of you who don't know the verse by heart, Luke 4, 7 says, If you worship me, all will be yours. Which at first seems like a pretty inspirational quote, until you realize it's being said by Satan as he's tempting Jesus. After one minute of it being posted, I had five amens. Within the hour, I had over a hundred. As of the time of me saying this, the post has 666 likes, found that kind of ironic, and 576 comments. Out of those comments, only 20 people corrected me. That's 3.5%. 3.5. Almost 97% of the comments from supposed Christians we're in agreement with something straight out of the devil's mouth simply because they sounded nice and were taken out of context. This is what's wrong with Christianity, guys. You know what 97% looks like on a chart? It looks like this. That's how many professing Christians did not take the time to learn what the Bible said or to at least fact check me before commenting. And it wasn't just your everyday believers commenting either. One amen in particular, which has since been deleted, but not before I screenshotted it, was by a man whose account name was So-and-So Pastor. Now, I just wanted to make sure that his last name wasn't Pastor or anything, so I commented, Are you a pastor? Yes, he said. Do you realize who is speaking in this passage? Yes, our Lord Jesus. Our Lord Jesus. A man who calls himself an overseer of God's church, an elder, a, a, a leader, is completely ignorant not only to who said this, but to the entire gospel of Jesus Christ and the entire reason that Jesus did what he did in the first place. Some other comments. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Amen, Lord. Thank you for everything you do for me and my family members. All my desires will be my possession. What? What do people think Christianity is? Jesus died so that we could be rich? So that life could be easy? No. Jesus died so that we could have eternal salvation. Anyone who thinks they'll be rewarded materially because they decided to follow Jesus is in for a big surprise, because that ain't what it's all about. That's a bunch of prosperity gospel nonsense. It's false teaching, and it's taken right out of Satan's mouth in Luke 4-7. Read your Bible, guys. Know what it's about. Understand that there is false doctrine out there, and apparently 97% of us fall for it. 2 Timothy 4 says that for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. That's exactly what's happened, to the point that most of us don't even care enough about the truth to open our Bibles or to go on a Bible website to read it for ourselves. We just hear something, and if it sounds good, then we believe it. And that has to stop. Second Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. The Bible is important. Our salvation depends on our understanding of this book. We have to understand that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth, lived a perfect life, died a horrible, painful death, and rose again so that by following him we could have eternal life in heaven. That's it. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Not riches, not material blessings, not possessions. Everlasting life. Please share this video if you're so inclined. I really want to encourage everyone to not get sucked into unbiblical teachings just because they sound Christian-y. Please keep reading your Bible. Please don't forget what it's about. That's all I got. Thanks, guys.